Well, a birth in the NSRBL final was on the line in game three last night between the Lloyd Mr. Twins and the Meadow Lake Sox. Moses, join me on the desk and you have all the highlights. It was a great game. We were there last night. Very good action. It was fantastic. The Twins, of course, blowing a two run lead. They could have ended this one much, much earlier in Meadow Lake, but they forced, the Sox did, forced a game three, a third and deciding game at Legion Ballpark. So to the highlights, Steve Barber on the hill for the Twins. Top of one, gets out of the jam with runners in scoring position, sitting down Regan Beck. Twins will show how it's done in the home half of the inning. Kevin Payne sending the Jordan Stacy offering to right center out of the reach of Kevin Gerwing. Troy Winterhalt and Kevin Hoffer hustle down the third base line. The throw offline, two runs score safely. It's two zip for the Twins. Next batter, DJ File. Finds a hole through the right side of the infield. Payne chugging home, just beating the tag. It's now three zip. Up next, Craig Traverse. He gets into the action with a single to left file. Would score from second to make it four nothing twins on back to back to back hits. Moving to the top of the third, two men on for Quincy Winkler. And Steve Barber wishes he had that pitch back. It goes over the wall and right. A three-run shot. Sox cut the Twins lead to one. Now to some controversy in the bottom of the third. File appears to ground into the 1-4-3 double play. And the Twins don't like that call very much. The outfield ump decides to give Dirk Trepto a warning. Now Trepto, as you will see, pleading his innocence. Saying he wasn't the one that was yelling. Now on the replay... It may seem like the Twins have a point. The ball enters Winkler's glove a fraction of a second as you see the dust kick up on first base. So with two out, Traverse at the dish. He grounds one to short. Devin Hildebrand's throw is not in time. The Sox aren't happy. Let's go to the replay once again. This one, too close to call. Tie goes to the runner, I guess. Now we'll move on because that was big. Up next, Sean Carrick. What does he do? Well, he hits what seems like a routine pop-up to left. But Chris Ellis can't make the grab. File scores all the way from first to make it 5-3 Twins. They take on six more for the 11-4 victory, meaning their drive for five straight in the NSRBL is still alive. Lloyd Minster has now beaten the Sox in all three playoff meetings in the four seasons. They're led by their aggressive play on the base path. After failing to capitalize with runners on base in Game 2, the Lloydminster Twins were not going to let in again, setting the tone by scoring early and often en route to an 11-4 victory, earning a berth to the NSRBL Finals for the 14th consecutive year. We didn't want to lose here, and we're, we have our minds squarely put on the final there and what we want to do, so we came, came all business tonight. The boys came to play. They swung the bats. Barber did a great job on the mound, kept, kept us in it, and uh, it was all around just a good game. Pitching has been the biggest advantage in these playoffs, particularly in this series. It was enough, I guess. They, their pitchers struggled a little more than certainly we did, so that uh, we had some hot bats, and we pulled ahead early, and then when they sort of came back with that three-run bomb, that was... Uh, it, it wasn't enough to, for them to pull ahead. Their resiliency was tested once again after a controversial out was negated by another bang-bang play that went in the Twins' favor. It was a so-so call. Um, he made it up because I thought the second guy was out, first guy was safe. Um, but then we, you know, two outs and we scored three or four runs, and that was huge. In the playoffs, that's a, a big part of it is getting the, some breaks here and there or a bounce here and there. and. And you're going to get calls that they're going to go either way all the time and, and kind of went both ways for us tonight. They've come a long way from their struggles down the stretch during the regular season and are on the cusp of making history. The Twins, along with the Wilkie Brewers in the North Battle for Beavers, have won four straight titles. But the Twins are now in search of an unprecedented fifth straight championship. We have a history of winning on this team, so we're, we've always been driven uh, to win. And towards the end of the season, we had... Two or three losses in a row, which, which, pretty, which shook us up a lot, but I think it was a good thing. It really uh, um, it got us reset for the playoffs. No one's done that yet, so it's obviously, we, we talk around a bit, but we keep it quiet. Whatever the, We know what the goal is, so it doesn't really have to be talked about a whole bunch. We have to win two more games. Um, you know, the, we, the season's not over. Uh, we can't look past this game. 
we have to look for you know t to the next two and you know just come out and play hard. The Twins will have to wait and see who they'll face starting tonight. The Border City Blue Jays have not let in run all playoffs. That was until last night's game two after leading 5-4 the North Battleford Beavers come from behind victory. As you see there, 7-6, tying this one at one game apiece. Game three here in Lloydminster tonight. First pitch is scheduled at 6.30 at Legion Ballpark. And more NSL or NSRBL news to tell you about. Uh, Scott Thompson of the St. Wahlberg Reds is named the league MVP for 2013, receiving four first place votes and two second place votes. Thompson led the league with a 533 batting average. Colby Field of the Lloydminster Blue Jays and Reed Flash of the Lloydminster Juniors finished second and third, respectively. That's your first look at sports. Gerard is up next with weather. It's hard to believe that the Lloydminster Bobcats will open up their main camp three weeks from today. Well, the Cats have also looked into the future and are one of four teams that have put in a bid to host the 2015 Western Canada Cup. The Cats are in competition with Brooks, Grand Prairie and Fort McMurray to become the first AJHL team to host the four-team tourney. Bobcats head coach and general manager Gary Van Herway says the Border City would be a great place to host a tournament of this nature. We just felt it would be the ideal place and ideal location to hold one of those events. And I know the Royal Bank Cup was something they were interested in a few years back when it was a privately owned team. And I think they put in a, a bid that certainly got serious consideration to be played good there. And, uh, you know, we're not just sort of calling at that point. Uh, we feel that we can put on as good a, uh, an event as anybody can for the Western Canada Cup. With Van Haraway's mission to get younger, the former CJHL champion head coach also pointed out the organization would get great interest from hockey players knowing they're one step closer reaching the RBC Cup. Hosting it certainly is going to increase your, your chances of uh, securing players, good competitive players that want to play or at least have a chance to play in a national championship. And Although it's only the Western Canada Cup and there's certainly no guarantees, even if you get it, uh, I mean, you've got to be the in the top two of the five to get on the final, but certainly it does get you one step closer, there's no doubt about it. So when it comes to recruiting, uh, it's certainly got to help and increase our chances of uh, securing good players that want to play at that level, that's for sure. The second Western Canada Cup will be held in Dauphin, Manitoba from April 25th to May 4th. To softball, the Lloydminster Under-16 Rebels are off to Canadian Westerns in Winnipeg aiming for another chance to add some hardware this season. Defensively we're strong as long as our bats can get going and our pitching's good we're you know we'll be up there with anybody there I'm pretty sure. The Rebels enter the under 16 championship with confidence now this is a team that's had success playing in a league against women. The higher level in competition has the Rebels ready for a big run at Westerns. It was good to play with the ladies because they're more experienced than we are and then I think it'll be easier for us to compete against girls our own age. The Rebels will face tough matchups early in the round robin going against a team from Saskatoon then the host team Smitty's in their first two games. Stiff competition aside the Rebels aren't shy when it comes to their ambitions capturing a medal. That's my goal for our team and I think we have the ability to medal this year. We're definitely going for medal. Um, that would be um, great if we could but as long as we're competing every game you know that's what we want to do for sure from young superstars with the rebels to an older one now as a player all you have to do is focus on getting your job done at your position but adding the head coaching title to your name as well well that adds to your workload matt schumont introduces us to someone pulling double duty in this week's superstar next door it's just been a family thing i guess uh, my dad played and my brother played I just naturally came into it, I guess. Finishing the season with a 2-12 batting average, Border City Blue Jays Clayton Irma also ended the year striking out 22 batters and putting up a 2.33 ERA, but is quick to give all the praise to his team. Pitching's been great for us this year. Uh, regular season, we only let in just over 30 runs, which is, I think, is 20 runs less than the next team or pretty close. So pitching's been great this year. Not only has Clayton standing on the diamond he has also taken on the role as head coach a job that has been a little up and down for him frustrating at times <laughs> um, trying to get trying to keep these guys uh, coming to games and practices is tough but 
um, it's rewarding when, when we can play ball like this, I guess, and have the year that we've had so far. Now the veteran may have an opportunity to face his former team if the Blue Jays make it to the league final. Plain says he would like nothing more to win an NSRBL title and take down his former Twins teammates. We started uh, eight or nine years ago, I guess, as the Jays. And there's three or four of us, or even more, maybe half a dozen of us that came over from the Twins. And uh, we've been we've had a r rivalry with them for every year here, it's sort of a friendly rivalry. And uh, it'd be nice to nice to take the title away from them. Matt Schumont, New Cap Sports.